Welcome back to the news at 10. Something strange occurred today in Oshobo, the Oshun state capital. As reports say, some suspected hoodlums have set the state high court on fire. An eyewitness told Channel's television that the incident happened in the early hours of the day and valuables, including court documents, were destroyed. It was also gathered that the security men on duty were tied up and one of the guards was injured by the criminals who were trying to gain access to the building. The Ocean State Chief Judge, who visited the scene to assess the situation, declined to speak with journalists. Now, the Federal High Court sitting in Lagos has fixed March the 6th to hear a suit filed by the former First Lady, Mrs. Patience Jonathan. The defendant had contended that the EFCC remanded him in custody without access to his lawyers. He had also denied certain statements he made while in custody of the anti-graft agency, insisting that the statements were obtained under duress. And that man we're speaking about is the EFC, who the EFCC remanded is Waripomobuwe Dudafa, a former senior special assistant on domestic affairs to the ex-president Goodluck Jonathan. Mr. Dudafa and one Joseph Nna a standing trial before Justice Mohammed Idris on charges of alleged fraud to the tune of 5.1 billion naira. Our judiciary correspondent Shola Shreeli now reports. Assistant to former President Goodluck Jonathan is testifying in a trial within trial to determine the voluntariness of some statements he made while in the custody of the EFCC after his arrest on an alleged 5.1 billion naira fraud. At the resumed hearing of the case before Justice Mohammed Idris, the court in a ruling admitted in evidence a remand order secured by the EFCC from a magistrate court for the purpose of detaining Mr. Dudafa while investigation into the case was ongoing. The defendant had denied being offered administrative bail by the commission. He had also denied that he had access to his lawyers. He, however, admitted that one barrister, Silvanus Habila, who is his uncle, came to his rescue and acted as his lawyer. This lawyer, the EFCC also claimed, recommended sureties on behalf of the defendant, sureties who allegedly produced forged documents and truncated the administrative bill granted to the defendant. The former presidential aide, however, ended his testimony by reiterating that he was coerced to make the statements he made while in the custody of the EFCC. His co-defendant and account officer, one Iwejo Joseph Unna, who allegedly aided him to divert the phones, also told the same line. He claimed that officials of the EFCC asked him to implicate the first defendant so he could regain his freedom. He also claimed the statements he made were dictated to him. The proceedings were stalled at the instance of the second defense counsel, Mr. Sunday Abumere, who insisted on an adjournment despite the objections of the EFCC prosecutor, Mr. Rotimi Oyedeko. Parties in the matter eventually agreed to the 21st of February for the continuation of the trial within trial. Shola Shieli, Channels Television News. Let's take a look at some business news now. Here's Anne Waudu. You first. First Bank. Thank you, Joma. Welcome to the world of business. Valentine's season is best known for gift giving amongst friends, family, and loved ones. But with the current economic recession, is gift giving still a priority for Nigerians? Our correspondent, Temple Ashaju, reports. Valentine is one of the seasons often synonymous with shopping. Although it doesn't come with a public holiday, it changes the atmosphere for businesses. But at this time of recession, consumers and Valentine-related items are found wanting. Because of the exchange rate, the rate to sell things has really changed. The prices are different. See, most of our hotelers, when they come, they can't even afford to buy. No, there is restriction, but you know Nigerians, suffering and smiling. We are hauling any time. If it is time for Valentine, we will do it. Maybe a day or even one week to the Valentine's Day. The market is always, you know, most people are almost always in the market, you know. 
buying with one. But as you can see now, you can't find anybody on the show in the shop now. With this fact, Valentino has a new interpretation in Nigeria. This is because the Mystery Index, an index that calculates a nation's economic well-being in Nigeria, is now at 52.15. And this stems from underemployment, unemployment and inflation rates. Night shows are also organized to spice up Valentine's Day. But only a few can meet the demands. Like the dress I picked, the red dress is 12,000, then the other one is 15. Then the long dress for dinner will be 20k because I need to, you know, go out and show off his bow and party hard with my boo. There is a recession in the country, so I can only buy maybe a, a biscuit, you understand, for my kids. So my wife, uh, maybe any kind of drinks, uh, maybe wine. Lending rates and per capita GDP growth play a significant role in a nation's misery index. With the resultant effects of these negative macroeconomic indicators on the citizenry, perhaps Valentine's pendants is not a priority for now. Temple Ashaju, Channel Television News. Now the main index of the local stock market closed today's session with downbeat sentiment following poor performance of some major bellwethers. For the analysis of today's trading... Here is Harriet Abwini. The Nigerian equities market starts off the week bearish, down 0.38% on the back of negative market breadth and negative impact of the consumer goods sector. The price table recorded a total of 18 losers, led in percentage by Transcorp, Nigerian Breweries and Nascon, which all recorded declines of around 5%. On the other hand, 15 gainers were led by Better Glass, PZ Cousins and UAC Properties. GT Bank, UBA and eTransact pulled the highest patronage at the end of Monday's trading session. At the end of the day, in about 2,386 deals, 141.91 million shares worth over 1.38 billion naira were traded. And those are the day's trading figures. I'm Harriet Agbingi. Well, U.S. stocks continue to break through new highs. With details on what to watch out for on Wall Street this week, let's join VOA Channel's TV business correspondent, Jill Malandrino, from the Nasdaq market site in New York. U.S. stocks popped on the open, looking to add to last week's gain that saw record all-time high levels for all the major averages on Friday. The S&P 500, Dow Jones Industrial Average, Russell 2000, and Nasdaq Composite all closed at record highs, notching gains of anywhere from three-tenths to half a percent for the session, along with weekly advances of roughly one percent. The move has come since the presidential election in November, with Trump winning and markets hopeful. His new policies will spur economic growth and corporate profits. Last week's surge came as he pledged to move quickly on tax cuts. There's no major economic reports expected on Monday, but Trump and Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau are due to meet today. Turning to the trading week ahead, the Federal Reserve moves back into the spotlight with a slew of speakers on the circuit, including Chair Janet Yellen, who gave her semi-annual testimony to the House Senate Becky Committee on Wednesday at 10 a.m. Eastern. Key economic data include the January CPI, retail sales leading indicators, housing starts, and other industrial manufacturing reports. The earnings calendar is starting to wind down with mostly cable and technology names reporting this week. From the Nasdaq market site, I'm Jill Malandrino and this is VOA Channel's Business News. With a combination of European Commission's latest economic forecast for the Eurozone, optimism on U.S. President Donald Trump's economic agenda, as well as resilience from geopolitical tensions in Asia, most world-leading stock exchanges close today stronger. But let's see the numbers. And that's Business News tonight. Thanks for watching. I'm Anne Mwawadu. It's back to you, Ijoma. You first. First Bank. 
Thanks a lot, Anne. Nigerian breweries recorded its highest sales in 70 years in 2016, and this feat, according to the company's management, was in the face of economic challenges. To appreciate their partners, whom they say made this happen, the company has organized distributors' awards to honor those in the transport and distribution chain. We'll get to that, but let's see something else now as Nigerian youths have been challenged to take their entrepreneurship skills a step further by leading, playing leading roles in job creation to consolidate efforts made by the government. The chief executive officer of the Galaxy Transportation and Construction Limited, Baba Ghana Daluri, gave the charge during an awards and launch ceremony to appreciate the contributions of members of staff and investors. Friends and investors in Galaxy Transportation and Construction Limited at the company lunch and award ceremony. The company is an example of a successful private sector initiative that has investments in construction and transportation services in Nigeria. 35-year-old engineer Babagana Daluri is the chief executive officer of the company. From the money I served during my service, I was able to buy one tricycle, popularly known as Kekena Tech. Six months later, I added another tricycle from the money generated from the first tricycle on higher purchase agreement. That was how the number of tricycles multiplied in geometric progression. Delivering a lecture on youth entrepreneurship, the Northeast Regional Coordinator of the Growing Enterprise Leaders, Engineer Mohamed Zama, encouraged young people to lower the unemployment rate by embracing entrepreneurial skills. You have to come to terms with the fact that not all businesses succeed, but when you fall, what you do? You keep on that up. Some young people who are already doing well in their business ventures showed some of their skills. For the guests, the event calls for a reflection, especially in view of the current economic reality in the country. I think it's good for youths to think of what they have in them, develop it, and now make it a career and earn from it. If the youths have stand of her, in fact, we can overcome all the decisions that are going on in this country. Highlights of the occasion was the presentation of awards to individuals who have contributed to the growth of the company as staff and investors. Okay, okay. Look here, look here. Still ahead on the news at 10, Yakubu Egwene joins Coventry City on short-term deal as the club continues to fight against relegation. That's on sports. Do join us again.